I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxart Gardening. Today we are doing the early October garden tour and there's so much to see. So let's get started. So here is the state of my big garden bed. It looks so different without all of the tomatoes in it. Um, but we still got some peppers and we've got some seedlings for the fall garden. So if I take you in closer to the end over here, my second summer beans actually look pretty sad right now. They were eaten pretty heavily by caterpillars. Um, and you can see most of the leaves are missing. Um, and at this point, I'm just letting them make their last few pods um, and letting them fully mature so that maybe I can get some seeds from them. Now, in addition to taking out the tomatoes, I also pulled out all of the basil um, because it's starting to get cold enough at night here where the basil was looking pretty sad. And I wanted to make sure that I got as much pesto out of that as possible. So I basically just cut off the entire plants um, and went ahead and processed that. Now the peppers, it is getting a little chilly for them at night as well, but they seem to be holding up pretty well. I've got one singular Criolla, pepple, pe Criolla pepper here. Um, this is actually the only pepper this plant has produced all year, and I'm really hoping I get to harvest it before the frost kills everybody. My Zulu pepper plants have still been super productive, making these tiny little purple black bell peppers. And my Lisa peppers, after the first flush of one to two peppers each, are starting to make a few more and some of these bigger ones I'm hoping I'll be able to harvest as well. Now in the in-between you can finally see a little better some of the turnips that I planted. These also don't look the best. This is probably the best looking one but it's clear that some snail or slug has gotten to a lot of these leaves and at this point I'm just hoping that they pull through. Um, I'm also planting in this spot where I had a basil, I just put in some seeds for more turnips. And you can see back in between, there are more turnip sprouts. I think these ones are radishes. If we look up, we can see more baby Lisa peppers. They are so cute. I don't know if I'm going to be able to harvest these ones before the frost, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've still got some Buena Mulata peppers that will probably be harvestable. They're harvestable just about any time. It's just about the level of spice from these ones. More root vegetables. I probably should have labeled these better. I think these are turnips. You can kind of see the purple at the bottom of the stems here. The thing that I don't understand is why these are so leggy. Um, it might just be that they have been in a lot of shade and so they're getting a little leggy, but I think turnips normally shouldn't stretch out at the bottom like this. I don't think this is necessarily the healthiest turnip sprout I've ever seen. Up here I have some Anaheim peppers. These have been really great for stuffing and roasting. They're like a really mild level of spice, so they go really well as like a main dish pepper. Additionally, if we come over here, I'm about to get my first uh, Du d'Espagne pepper of the year. It is slowly changing colors as we speak. Um, and these, these are pretty big sweet peppers. Um, and we'll see how thick the flesh is. Um, one of the best peppers I got out of here was an Edgevarsky pepper. And let's see, here is a baby one. They'll get to be about three times that big. They're so sweet and the flesh is so like thick and juicy compared to the Zulu peppers that had very thin flesh. And while they were tasty, there just wasn't a lot of them. So I'm thinking I'll definitely be growing more of the bigger 
meteor peppers and if this is also one of those I might grow more of these that next year as well but we'll just have to see now right in here I have a row of carrot sprouts these are looking pretty good these are the best looking carrot sprouts in my entire garden right now and there's a couple other rows that I planted as I took the tomatoes out that haven't come up yet and then right here you'll notice there's kind of a big empty space and that's not just a missing tomato there's actually a missing pepper plant that was right here and I actually dug that up yesterday and put it in a pot to bring inside um, it's my first year doing that so I didn't make a video about it because I have no idea how it's going to go or what I'm doing when I do that um, but if it goes well this year I'll be sure to make a video about it next year this dude Espana, it still hasn't made me a good pepper, but it's definitely the biggest pepper plant in the garden at the moment, just looking at everything. We've still got a few weeks left in the season, so we'll see how these peppers do. So now we're coming up on the trellis. This is my source of joy in the second summer garden. I had really been hoping from the beginning to get a trellis covered in noodle beans and now I have. I love how they hang down from the trellis and honestly there's so many of them the shadows make it a little harder to see but they are so cool. If you've never seen noodle beans before this is a Chinese red noodle bean sometimes people call these yard long beans and they also come in green and they taste a lot like green beans, but one of the main differences is that you cannot steam them like green beans. They'll get kind of waterlogged and mushy. So stir frying them works out really well. And I've actually pickled a few of them to see how that goes. Um, interwoven here between everything is the Malabar spinach. And that is doing the best that it has all year. This has been growing since spring and you can kind of see it's winding around and hanging on to these noodle beans um, and that's been really pretty too. Right in here is the 4x4 bed. It's mostly carrots right now. You can see I went ahead and took out the um, spaghetti squash that I had here. It never really did produce for me um, and that's partially squash bugs, probably partially just this year. A lot of people seem to have been having trouble with squash. Uh, but I've got carrot sprouts planting here now, and those are coming up. I think I mentioned in an earlier video that um, I was hoping that the carrots would grow up and then I would be able to plant my onions and garlic in this bed, and I'm realizing that that is now sounding very silly uh, looking at the size of these carrot sprouts. So what I think I'm going to do is put the onions and garlic in where the beans are right now. Those are almost ready to come out anyway. Um, and also, I think I mentioned that I thought that this was garlic coming up that I hadn't pulled. There's another one back there that I just, you know, left in the ground by mistake. But it turns out it's actually onion. Um, and I'm still going to leave it. still going to see what happens. But I think that's interesting that there was an onion or two that I missed and now they're coming back up. But that is what bulbs do. They live in the ground, they split every year, and then they come back up when the conditions are right. So we'll see what happens with these. We have a little bit in the greenhouse again. My salad bag is coming along nicely. Nothing's big enough to eat yet, but I've got a lot going on. And again, if you didn't see the video, this is just an easy way to um, grow cut and come again baby greens all winter long very cheap, very simple, and uh, they're all planted so close together because I'm hoping to pull off leaves while they're all still very small. So we're not looking to grow big heads of lettuce in here. Next to it is one of my two Tabasco plants. These have been suffering from the cold nights more than any other plant, and so I pulled him in to the greenhouse to hopefully keep him just a little bit warmer. I'm keeping a lot of the the doors and vents open because the salad greens can't take too warm during the day. 
Um, but I'm just hoping that I can get it to mature its final peppers before the frost because it took so long to get these plants started and I have like, I don't know, five Tabasco peppers inside and I was really hoping to have enough to make a sauce. So we'll see if this helps and I'll show you where I'm keeping the other Tabasco plant of the two in a moment. And here's just a quick check in on the curiosity of the black Spanish radish seeds that randomly sprouted over here. Um, to be honest, I did not expect them to live. Um, they're not looking like they're making any radishes, um, but they are living here and um, not looking too bad. Um, maybe once it gets colder, they'll start rooting up. Who knows? Maybe they won't. But it's interesting to watch and see how these volunteer plants take care of themselves and what happens with them when they're growing straight out of just hard red clay. Because if you look at this soil, like right underneath the detritus on the surface, is just this red hard clay. It's not very good soil at all. So I'm surprised that they're growing here at all. The backyard is still a jungle, but it's a little less of a jungle. I took out the tomatoes that were in the containers back here, and the herbs have started coming up. Still, I don't know if it's going to make it. It's growing pretty slowly, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. The cilantro, of course, loves the cold. It's like one of those sorority girls that's like cannot wait for sweater weather. Like cilantro is enjoying the brisk in the air, whereas my tomato plants were kind of more like me and they're like, no. But anyways, all of these are still doing fine. It's not cold enough to kill any of them. And I think the parsley also will survive the winter pretty well. Not sure about the other herbs, but we'll have to see. This is that pepper plant that I dug out. Um, you can see that I cut it back pretty significantly, and that's because I damaged a lot of the roots digging it up. Um, and so with plants like this, you have to realize that the foliage on top is a direct representation of the root system below. And so when you damage the root system, it cannot support as much foliage as it had before. And so by cutting down the foliage, I'm giving the remaining root system a chance at continuing to support the plant. And this is going to live here for just a couple more days to make sure it is pest free before I bring it inside my house. Now over to the left here, I have my onion sprouts. And these are doing pretty okay. This brown water in the bottom just has a nitrogen fertilizer in it and I just like stir it up every so often so that it's kind of micro dosing the um the plants as they soak up this water um so these once they get big enough will get transplanted and onion sprouts you'll notice i have quite a few per cell and that's intentional that's to maximize my cell space but also because i know the onion sprouts are really easy to separate their roots are pretty straight down they don't really tangle with each other and so I'll be able to separate them pretty easily as I put them out into the bed. Now I'm going to try very hard not to run face first into this spider here. These little, I don't know what kind of spiders these are. They kind of remind me of like little crabs. They're black with white bellies. Um, and they love to build these like triangle shaped webs all in front of where I always walk. They're very quick. So I'm constantly trying not to run face first into those. Um, over to my left are those two refugee pepper plants that stayed in the greenhouse way too long and that actually ended up being amazing for them. However, you'll notice all of the sad rotted peppers on this one. That is because something got to this plant. It was eating them eating the peppers. I got maybe one good ripe pepper off of this plant um, and I decided to leave the half-eaten ones on instead of pulling them off to 
like hopefully attract the attention of whatever was eating so it would leave alone the one or two that hadn't been touched which seems to have worked out pretty well and I think whatever was eating on it has moved on um, so maybe I will still get one or two nice peppers off of this plant over with the rest of the hot peppers you'll notice a few are missing those are the chosen ones who have been moved inside and we'll go look at those in a minute currently left out here I have the jigsaw um, one of my serranos one of my jalapenos I actually harvested a bunch of jalapenos the other day and pickled them and those will stay good for quite a while um, I love using pickled jalapenos in this spicy burrito recipe that I have so those will get used and they'll go to good use now this we got to take a look at this um, for those of you that remember this is the serrano pepper plant that was eaten down to the stem by the tomato hornworm there were no leaves on it zero and look at it it is flowering it has grown back I mean honestly I am impressed uh, if I had the room I'd be taking this guy inside because he's obviously a survivor but instead I chose the serrano pepper plant that had a bunch of peppers on it already um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, ripen those inside even if the plant doesn't do too well over the winter uh, I really wanted to salvage as many harvestable peppers as possible now I'm coming over here we're gonna carefully not get a face full of spider web <laughs> But I have my cayenne here. This is another one. This branch here, you can kind of still tell, it was eaten down to the bare bones. And it has some actual peppers on it, which I just I think it's amazing. These plants can recover from so much. And because of the spiders, you can see this other web back here. I can't walk you down, but the cucumber are doing okay. This one on the left, the top of it just kind of randomly started wilting and dying out, and I don't know why. I, I have no guesses. But the one on the right is doing pretty well. I am seeing that they are making female flowers, and you know, if I was going to disturb the spiders, I would probably go back there and be hand pollinating. I've seen plenty of pollinators around though, so they should get pollinated just fine. And I might end up with one or two cucumbers by the end of this after everything. So that would be really exciting if I did manage to get some cucumbers. And that's most of what I have going on in the backyard garden. So here's just a quick peek at the plants that made it indoors. Um, because I live in an apartment with a roommate, uh, my bedroom is the only really good option to keep plants. And so I have very limited space. But I have this big window right here. You can see it looks out onto the back porch and the backyard. So the lighting isn't the best. It's shaded by the porch, but it's the only window I have. Um, and I have my grow lights from when I was seed starting turned down on the plants as well. And then the light bulbs in this lamp are actually sunlight bulbs as well. So you can see I have my Tabasco. And you can see what I was talking about. It dropped a lot of leaves. It was very unhappy outside. So he came inside. I have the serrano plant that has all of the peppers on it that are almost ready. I have one of my cayenne pepper plants and then I brought inside my ginger. Uh, the ginger has been doing really well actually. Um, I harvested some for a meal the other day and I'm still working out like the best method for harvesting ginger and like not killing the plant. Um, and when I figure out the best method, I'll tell you guys. But we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I'll have ginger all winter long. I'll be able to move this guy back out in the spring. So that is the garden at the beginning of October. There's a lot of change going on, a lot of stuff from the summer still persisting, and uh, a lot of cool things to come. I'm most excited about the onions and garlic, but I think right now I'm just hoping that I get all of my peppers and that I get the um, peppers indoors to ripen and maybe even survive the whole winter so that I can start out next summer ahead of the game. 
thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching and supporting me. And I will be back with you very soon with new videos. But until then, happy gardening.